Since Whitney Houston's untimely death in 2012, family and friends have been picking up the pieces, and fans often wonder throughout the years what became of her homes. Despite her hit songs and success, Whitney reportedly passed away in a state of financial disarray. We do know the last place she called home was her distinctive estate in New Jersey, with an overhead view almost resembling a UFO landing pad. In more recent years, this five acre home was purchased for $1.5 million by a big Whitney fan. Aside from this house, the singer also formerly lived in a more traditional style abode in Alpharetta, Georgia. Today we'll take a look at a couple of the mansions that were once owned by the legendary Whitney Houston. In these videos we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Whitney Houston was one of the best selling artists of all time and a Grammy award winning one at that, starting her music career at the young age of 19. She grew up in New Jersey singing for the church choir and went on to become the voice of the 80s and the 90s. Houston is even certified as the most awarded female artist by the Guinness World Records. The beloved singer's first two studio albums both peaked at number one and her fame would only rise from there. Considering all of Whitney's success, and while at one point she even signed a $100 million record deal, it came as a shock to many that she actually died a reported $20 million in debt. Apparently this contract with Sony Arisa was meant to be paid in stages, with each installment being a loan depending on the success of her recordings. Sadly, Whitney's past success didn't translate to current times. Whitney died in February 2012, and while this was an untimely tragedy, not even a year later, the Houston estate began to thrive. The legend's estate earned $40 million, helping to pay off her debt. With fans mourning the loss, Whitney's records were being bought up left, right, and center, and there was also help from the late star's movie, Sparkle. These days, Whitney's name has been cleared of her debt, and she can rest in peace. All that being said, many have wondered about the singer's real estate holdings, and she actually still owned her longtime contemporary New Jersey estate at the time of her passing. The concrete and glass structure last sold for $1.5 million back in 2014. Hey guys, it's Care the Vampire Slayer and I'm bringing you another house tour here on Famous Entertainment. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell, we post a new video daily. Today we'll be taking a look at two of the former estates of the late singer Whitney Houston, including her main residence in New Jersey that's unique to say the least, and another classic looking home she used to own in Georgia. If you like this video, we've done plenty of other celebrity house tours on legends like Tina Turner and Elton John, and we'll link to some at the end. As always, don't forget to follow me on Instagram to chat, and now, let's get into this video. In 2014, it was reported that Whitney's former main residence was finally sold into someone who was actually a huge fan of the late singer. The home originally went up for sale at $2.5 million and sold for $1.5 million to emergency room physician and investor Matthew Krauthammer. He said the home reminds him of Houston's true heart. Whitney bought the home back in 1987 for $2.7 million when she was at the peak of her stardom and the home was less than a year old. The concrete and glass structure sits on five acres of land in the township of Mendham, New Jersey, and it was also the site of Whitney's wedding to Bobby Brown back in 1992. The sprawling, multi-winged modern mansion measures in at over 12,500 square feet of space, with circular interior spaces and almost looks like a UFO landing pad from aerial views. There are five beds, five baths, and features like a six-car garage and 13 skylights throughout the residence. Whitney's former master suite here was round and painted a shade of peach at the time she owned it, which I'm sure has since been changed. The massive bedroom also had a full wall of curving glass that overlooked the backyard, another similar wall that acted as an interior wall, and a built-in bed on a circular platform. Talk about throwback. A wide walkway leads to the front of the home where there's a long curved entrance hall with peach tiled flooring, and right next to this space is the circular living room, which is separated by a curved wall of stained glass. The formal living room boasted four or more plush white sofas back then, lined up along another wall of curved glass, and other features here included a stone fireplace, sunken bar, and a massive dome-shaped skylight. Winnie's former dining room also had these peach-colored floors and more walls of floor-to-ceiling glass, not to mention more glass in the form of the long dining table with seating for 10 that looked like it was straight from the 80s. 
The kitchen boasted a large work island with white cabinets and some more dark peach colors throughout, while the nearby family room had a fireplace and more of the same curved glass walls. The grounds of Whitney's former space-like home included multiple large lawn areas, as well as a handful of patios and terraces at the back of the house. There's also a swimming pool, a pool house, and a tennis court. During Whitney's many years living here, she reportedly added a games room, a media room, a professional recording studio, and all of those backyard amenities I just mentioned. While most, if not all, of the interior design at Whitney's mansion is now outdated and tacky, I'm willing to bet the current owner had the space modernized and upgraded to suit the current decade. The owner, Matthew Krauthammer, was reportedly trying to acquire the five acre property for three years until finally scoring it in 2014. He said about Whitney, who he's also a big fan of, she was generous to so many people and she spent a fortune renovating the house. The grounds are beautiful. At the time of purchase, Matthew was already living in Mendham and knew a thing or two about lavish real estate purchases. He planned to move into Whitney's former home after a few months of renovations and repainting. He said that Whitney hadn't lived at the home for about five years before her passing in 2012, which is another reason why it may have been so outdated. Back around 2009, it was also reported that Whitney owned the home next door, which she picked up in 1993 for over 573k, and it was allegedly used for staff, family, or guests. Whitney's main residence did come up on the market around 2009 as well, but she never ended up selling. And at that time, this additional property was put on the market for just under 950K. There were no reports of this property being sold either, but it was connected to the UFO style home by a small pathway, and it measured in at around five acres as well. There was a home here spanning 3,410 square feet with three beds and three baths, as well as features like an indoor lap swimming pool and full-size basketball court outside. Let's move on to another former home of Miss Houston, her place in Alpharetta, Georgia. Unfortunately, there are essentially no photos of this residence's interior, so we'll just have to use our imagination. Whitney's former Atlanta area home was much more traditional in style than her New Jersey place, and it's still currently owned by the same family the singer sold it to back in 2007. In recent years, they've actually given the estate a big renovation and touch up, which we can see from aerial photos of the exterior. This home was located in the exclusive gate community country club of the south and she and her former husband purchased the two level mansion in 2003 for about 1.3 million dollars later selling it for 1.19 million dollars the home sat on half an acre lot and inside featured 6,633 square feet with five beds and seven baths other features of Whitney's former Georgia house included a kitchen with wet bar breakfast nook and bar a billiards room more than one balcony throughout and a three-car garage there was also a pool and spa out back. Linda McCoy, who's a resident of this country club community and a former neighbor of Whitney's, said about the legendary singer, she was always very friendly. If you saw her out walking her dog or jogging, she always spoke. If she passed you in her car, she would wave. Houston and her ex, Bobby Brown, only lived here for less than four years and splitting time between this residence and the New Jersey house. Much of Bobby's short-lived reality show, Being Bobby Brown, was shot at the Alpharetta property and the couple was known for often redecorating and remodeling. While Whitney hung on to her New Jersey residence after divorcing Brown, she downsized for her next Atlanta area spa. Still in Alpharetta, she moved to Riverbend Manor Drive and purchased a three-story townhome in another gated community called North Gated Ellard. This house was still upscale, but slightly more modest, spanning 3,600 square feet with three beds, 3.5 baths, and features like a courtyard, a balcony, and stunning double height entryway. Sadly, some of the only photos that surfaced of Whitney's Georgia real estate were those in infamous bathroom photos released in the tabloids when the star was battling her ongoing drug addiction. The shocking images were said to be taken at her Alpharetta residence at the time, which was clearly during Whitney's time of struggle. After checking out where the late Whitney Houston called home before her untimely passing, I think that concludes this house tour. We checked out her longtime New Jersey residence that was more recently taken over by a fan, as well as what we knew about her properties in Georgia. What did you guys think? What about that UFO looking residence with all its glass walls and circular rooms? Now that was something else. But hey, I didn't totally hate it. I can also see how cool it would have been back in the 80s and 90s. 
I don't know about you guys, but I'm curious as to how the current owner ended up revamping the place and considering he's a Whitney fan, if he left any of the original features to remember her by. Be sure to tell me what you liked or didn't like about Whitney's homes in the comments down below. I think it's been fun doing some of these musical legend house tours, so if you guys have any ideas on who's next, definitely throw some ideas out there. I'm thinking maybe Diana Ross or maybe Paul McCartney. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.